الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Start with the praise and the blessings of our beloved Messenger of Muhammad Rasulullah um, and the praise of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Lord of the world. Uh, what I'd like to talk about today is give a reflection on recent events that have happened over the past week or so. And it's, it's, it's extremely interesting or weird or strange how things have developed. So about a week or so ago, the Senate had released a report documenting cases of torture that this country has done in the name of uh, protecting its citizens. And they were very heinous atrocities and, and whatnot that, that were done against, against individuals who might or might not have been innocent. Immediately after, there were reports, again, about the ISIS organization, uh, which we of course strongly condemned, but again documenting the crimes they're doing. So the media, the way they put it out, is yes, America is torturing, but hey look at these people, they're torturers and they're evil too. And then really a very tragic event has happened. And that this is an event that really Muslims need to understand how to react to. And this goes beyond any type of media narrative or what people are trying to do or what others are doing to us or whatever it might be. And that is the unfortunate events in Peshawar, in Pakistan, when school children were murdered and they were gunned down by other people who are Muslims or at least came to be Muslims, the Taliban in Pakistan. And unfortunately, if this was a new event, maybe we would say be less used to it or whatever, but unfortunately this is not a new event. Muslims have been killing Muslims throughout the Muslim world, and it needs to stop. And as Muslims, we need to take control over our narrative. And so when you're thinking about this and going through this, what is our action? And there are a couple different options that we can do in America and here and on the ground here. And one of them is we can retreat and go into our own enclaves and practice our deen ourselves and go out and, and, and you know, not really cause anything. The other option that we can do is we can go out and try to comfort people. And we can try to say, hey listen, we're really not different. Our God is the same as your God. Our religion is the same as your religion. You like to smoke coca, we like to smoke coca. You like to do this, we like to do that. We're, we're the same as you. There's no difference. We just our rituals are a little bit different, so that's why we choose it. Our culture is a little bit different, so that's why we choose it. And you guys have your own rituals, but you know, we're people and we're humans and whatnot, and, and so on. And then the third option is to set our own example. To say, I respect you, you respect me. Good, let me show you who I am. And there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu or as narrated of him. I wasn't able to ascertain if it's a sahih hadith or not. But the point is, the meaning of there is true and the concept is there and that, that's what we should think about. Is that the Muslim who mixes with the people and bears patiently their hurtful words. It is, is better than the one who does not mix with people and does not show patience under their abuse. And what this means is that we have to engage, but we have to engage in a positive, a, a, a positive way. 
And that in the Quran it talks about in the translation that if you call them to guidance and they don't hear it, you'll see them looking at you, but they will see, but they won't see. Hold to forgiveness and command is what is right, but turn away from the from the ignorant. Just ignore it. People are calling you terrorists, ignore it. People make a bad cartoon of the Prophet. We're not gonna we're not gonna change their minds by protesting and and threatening and things like that. Just ignore it. People say that your religion is misogynistic, just ignore it. You're not gonna convince them with your words. What you are gonna convince them is with your actions. And showing them this is what Islam is. We don't need to promote it. We don't need to throw out words out there. We don't need to have dialogues or whatever it might be. Just show positive examples. Go talk to your neighbors. Go talk to the community. Understand what their needs are. Understand what the value can do is to offer. When we started ISWV, the police came in when, in our ceremony. And they said, we like that you're here because you're going to bring positive influence to the community. Unfortunately, we have work to do to continue to get there, but that's what we want to do. And when you think about it, and you look at what the Quran teaches you, and it talks to you about the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. When he went to Egypt, and he was put in prison for no fault of his own, and he was accused unjustly, he could have came out and said, I want my rights. Give me my justice. Give me my retribution. But what does the Quran teach us of his example? He moved on. And he said, now that I'm out, put me in charge of the, of the, of the stores, of the grains. And let me, guide, let me guard them and protect them so that you can make the full use of them. Let me benefit you. Let me help you. Let me fill your need. Let me care for what you're doing. And so what we're looking here to do, if you want people to have a positive perception of Islam, if you don't want to be afraid of your Muslim identity, oh my God, that guy's wearing a thobe, is he a terrorist? Oh, that guy's wearing a shawar kameez, should we be afraid of him? Like, uh, let's just profile him or whatnot. Show them a counter example. And when you look at the Quran and when it talks about how people talk about Allah SWT and how they reject Him, it doesn't get into an intellectual dialectic with them. Let me reason with you. Let me write a, a 3,000 page book on why you have to believe in God. It points to heaven, it points to examples that people can see. It gives them things that they can relate to. So that they have tangible examples. You don't believe that God is there? Look at this universe. Look at the order. Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Where did it come from? It gives people examples. And so, when we're, when we're thinking about how to act, really, we have to focus on, on setting that example and taking those ideas and, and, and taking the initiative. Because if you do good, and if you provide a positive example, People are there, they are willing to listen to it, they're willing to hear it, they will talk about it. Because it's so good, they don't have any other choice but to do it. But what that does is, it makes us take away from the blame game. The, the Jews are conspiring against us, the, the, the Christians are against us, America is against us, the West is division and the English came back from so many years ago and they did divide and conquer and, and use those as excuses. I, I mean, fine, you want to look at those examples and we can talk about it and you'll have plenty of ideas to back up what you're saying and okay. And if you want to believe that narrative, you can, you, I can't argue with you. I won't convince you because you've already believed in it. But that's, that's a powerless example. 
That's a coward's way out. That's not taking a, a, accountability for your role in what you can do. If you find somebody hungry, can't you feed them? If you find somebody who needs education, can't you give them some money so they can get some education? If you find somebody crying, can you just try to comfort them and give them solace or whatever it is? It's not, it's not things that you have to learn to do. It's natural human emotions that we can do and we can act and we all have the capability to do. But we have to listen and we have to care about it. And that's why in the Quran it talks over and over again how we sent you your brother so and so to this nation. Because they were amongst the people. They were with them. They understood them. And then if people respond or they don't respond, that's, that's the other value. Is that, that's not up to you. But as long as you maintain your values, and these are values everybody loves. We're not talking about changing people into things they don't want to be. These are values that everybody loves. As long as you hold true to your values and set a good example to the degree you can, people respond. But underlying is that we truly have to care about the society. We truly have to understand their needs. And we truly have to get involved in helping people solve them. And we truly have to look at what we have to offer as individuals, as communities, so that we understand how to help them and that we're listening to them. We truly have to understand the opportunities that we have. And you look at it. When you have a halal shop, or a halal restaurant, or whatever it might be, some of them are great, they have great food, they look nice, they look clean. But if they're dirty, what are people going to think about it? If the guy's rude to you, what are they going to think about it? So, so it goes back to us that we really need to, to take ownership, and we have to take responsibility for our actions, so that, that what we can do is there. And so I'll just, I'll leave that part of the, the chutzah there so that we have some time to reflect on it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength and the courage to do that. And give us the confidence to go beyond words and to start doing things one, one thing at a time, little by little. And that if I can't do it alone, then maybe reach out to the guy sitting next to you and say, what can we do together? And then just start something and just take action. Kuli kuli hada wa sakhu wa niwa tu kuli. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. and so in conclusion I want to remind us of a hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who said whosoever of you sees an evil let him change it with his hand. And if he is not able to do so, then let him change it with his tongue. And if he is not able to do so, then when, with his heart. And that is the weakest of faith. And so, inshallah, if we're not at that level where we see a problem, we'll take action on it. But we'll try to do something about it physically. And then at least let's start to care and think about how do you relate to it, and how do you fix things. And if we do care, then at least let's start talking about it, and letting other, know, other people know how are we going to fix this issue, how are we going to address this challenge, how are we going to work together, or start something to alleviate the pains that people are facing. And then if we need help, then let's work together to do so. Because it, it really just starts with an idea. 
And then that, that's how an idea leads to an action. And then also there's, and just the final verse that I'll conclude is, is this. Is that invite to the way of thy Lord in wisdom and beautiful preaching, and argue with them in ways that are the best and most gracious. For thy Lord knoweth best who have strayed from his path and who received guidance. And so, really, at the essence of it is talking to people and communicating in the way that is appealing to them. And so traditionally it might have been a dialogue or a conversation. But now we have times where there's a lot of different ways in which we have to communicate and we have to think more broadly of it. And number one is the, is the services that we offer and the interactions that we have with people and how they run. The other thing is the products and the businesses and those types of things that, that, that people um, can relate to, they can tangle. What are, what are things and ideas and, and, and structures that, that, that people can feel and they can touch? So for example, when you go to Spain, in Andalusia, you will see Christian palaces that have fake Arabic writing on them. Because they saw the beauty of the Muslim architecture and their art and they wanted to imitate it. So, it's, it's, it's getting to that level of thought. How do we express our ideas that reflect our values in a way that people find appealing? How do we add beauty to the world? And then it's, it's organizations and services and things like this. What we're doing here in this masjid and what we want to do for the community is that the masjid is just a starting place. It's a foundation point. But really it's a way for us to meet each other and find like-minded individuals who also want to go out and help and take ownership and go out and, and solve the needs of our community and, and solve the, the needs of society. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to do so and give us the courage to continue on that path. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the proper guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the resources that to continue in this direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for any of the mistakes that we have made. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to give us more barakah and blessing in the effort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to communicate effectively to our neighbors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to make relations with our neighbors and set a good example. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to, to, to effectively let people know who He is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive those who have come before us and forgive them all their sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who have be, come before us and have paved this road to us that we've got this religion and have made us aware of Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Help those who are in need all across the world and all across the globe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to the people in Pakistan in their time of need. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give need, relief to the people of Afghanistan in their situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to the people of Iraq and Syria in their situation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to all the people in the Muslim world in all their situations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to those who are hungry. Wherever they are, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to those who have been orphaned, wherever they might be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give relief to anybody who has been afflicted by any type of natural disaster or anything like this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the Muslim community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite humanity together against the fight of, against shaitan. ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحبل لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين